All right, you're gonna see a majorly overlit video of me because I've been waiting for cloud coverage and it's just not working. It happened for a few seconds, but it's going away. So here's my overlit face and deep shadowed eyes. And I'm assuming that if you made your way to my website, you are probably a storyteller, an entertainer, a creator, an empath, intuitive, a channel, someone who's connected to the grid, the collective asking, the collective desire. And if you've been like most people, you've probably been serving within the lack matrix, within the world where there's a fundament, fundamental belief that there's not enough and that there's no hope for restoration, that we're just separate. And within that world where there's not enough, no matter how much we create or what we do or how much, how, how much we try, it's never going to be enough. We will never ultimately heal the wound or actually truly meet the desires of the collective because the fundamental belief is that there's not enough. And most of us developed the skills that we have as storytellers, entertainers, channels, empaths, intuitives, and developed our keen sensitivities because of trauma, a lot of us have anyway, because of experience a tremendous amount of lack in our childhood. And that gives you certain skills, certain survival skills. When your heart gets broken at a young age, it makes you in touch with things that you may not have thought about or, or felt otherwise. So what I found in my own experience and in the people that come to me and I've been working with is that our navigation system is changing. We're realizing that the collective asking as a whole is is asking for abundance. It's asking for self-sustaining energy. It's asking for freedom, ultimate freedom, ultimate liberation. And so the most the the people who are riding the edge of creation and are on that pulse, have their finger on the pulse of what the collective is asking for, is realizing that it's time to tell the story. We are realizing that it's time to tell the story of the higher metaphor. And the higher metaphor is what does it look like? What does it feel like to be a free genie? I think of us, of people who are servants to the grid as kind of genies stuck in a lamp. And we're, we, are, we are brought out by the collective. We, we, we kind of grant the wishes of the collective. But often most of us are not ultimately free. And the reason we're not free is because we've bypassed our own needs. Because we, like everyone else, has, have believed primarily in a matrix of lack. We've been programmed by the matrix of lack. So we've been programmed to believe we're not enough and that we never will be enough. And so often what that causes is us using our gifts as a way to get validation for what we are. But when we start waking up and realizing this is not sustaining, it's not self-sustaining, and it ultimately, there's so many butterflies, that it ultimately wounds us, it ultimately depletes our life force. You know, they say 80% of our life force is released through our emotions, our emotional body. And that means that when we, especially as feelers, deep feelers, storytellers, those of us who have sort of a keen pulse or a different perspective on the story, a different way to tune in, we, emotions are our currency. It's so crucial that we are emotionally healthy if we want to create well and if we want to be free genies. And I've been thinking about this, this concept of being a free genie quite a bit. That's what I've kind of, I'm too, tailoring all my new stuff to because what does it look like when a storyteller is ultimate free, ultimately free? When they get to tell their own story, which means they get to meet their own desires. And if you think about it, a genie is someone who can really shape shift. They're connected to the grid and the story enough that they can be any role in the story. You can be the villain, you can be the, you can be the hero, or you can be the victim. And you can create all the elements of the story and you understand how the story works, the whole matrix of the story. But if a genie was set free from having to serve the desires of everyone else, what desires would they ultimately have? And I believe it's the desires all of us ultimately have, which is for emotional intimacy, for true connection with other people, and to trust the other. The problem is, is when we create in the lack matrix, we don't trust the other because ultimately, just like most genies, they, they will play tricks on the people who are trying to make wishes for them because they ultimately see the greed of need. And the difference between need and desire is a very fine distinction. We are creatures of desire, so we are going to be fueled and driven by desire. Sun's coming out again. Um, we're, we're going to be fueled by desire. That is our fuel. So we can't make desire itself the enemy. 
But it is true that in order to thrive, if we truly want to be free, we have to have, we have to be programmed with a new matrix. We have to have a new fundamental belief and that belief needs to be in abundance. And I don't think we have to pull that belief out of thin air or that it doesn't exist. It actually does because where does story come from? That never ending wellspring of life, that storehouse of potential that we can tap into, that humans have always been able to tap into, those who quiet themselves enough to listen, to tune in. It's the wellspring of life that's within our hearts. And the only way to fully access that is to have our hearts fully restored. We must be restored fully to ourselves. And so setting ourselves free and embracing a new matrix that we serve, embracing a new collective asking, means restoring ourselves to our hearts. And that often means going back into those places that have been the most painful. And you'll, it's the, the places that we ran from and that we created ourselves against because we didn't want to be that. We didn't want to live that way. We didn't want to repeat those patterns that we got from our parents or from our society or culture. And so we broke ourselves against those norms. And we, and we, um, we created something new. And it's pretty epic that we did that. We showed what humans can do to survive and how we are naturally storytellers in our very essence and how story really gives our world and our meaning context. It really helps us make sense of our reality. Otherwise, it, life would just be a meaningless sequence of patterns and frequencies. The heart is really the, the language of, of humanity. And so if you want to be free and if you're looking and asking for how can I create from that new space and create wholly where I'm considering myself, whew, butterfly, where my creation doesn't drain my life force, where my creation doesn't eat me alive, but where it's a, it's a interdependent win, 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 win for your body, win for your heart, win for your mind, win for you, win for others, win for the planet. It's really time that we tap into the higher metaphor because what the collective is asking for is liberation. The collective is asking for liberation. So the most powerful thing and the highest leverage point we can play as creators is showing what the embodiment of freedom looks like. What does it look like for a storyteller to be free? And the storytellers need to start tapping. I shouldn't say need, I don't like that. It would be helpful if the storytellers began to tap into our needs, if we began to meet our own needs. Because when the storyteller's heart is fully restored, the matrix changes because the story itself is life-giving and it always wants to give life. But if, we, if the storyteller is programmed with the matrix of lack, its stories are always going to be about lack and about trauma. Now you can, still, you can still tell the story of trauma because it's part of our humanity. We can't pretend that hasn't existed. But what does it look like? This is what the collective is asking for. What does it look like to be restored, to be healed from that trauma, to have your heart fully back to you even after it's been shattered and broken? And is that possible? I truly believe it is. And I believe that's what we're being called to in this next level of our expansion and evolution. We are being called to embody the whole story, to master our own matrix, our own electromagnetic field, understanding that we are creators and that we are allowed to meet our needs. And not only that we're allowed to, but that they matter and that it's crucial in order to bring in the story of the higher metaphor and to start telling the story of the free genie. Everyone's looking for that story because ultimately we are all, we are, we are all the author of our own life. We are or, or a co-author with that which created us or brought us forth. But the story is all around us and it's living. And so what I'm doing, what I'm primarily doing now is talking about this matrix of abundance because I want to create a context in which we can talk about it and in which we can share and have a language and an understanding of this this awakening that's happening where we are remembering our full selves. We are remembering all that we are. Where we can no longer... Um, make anyone else responsible for our creations or make anyone else responsible for our feelings or our emotions. This is where we take full responsibility for who we are because we can't master ourselves. We can't master our matrix unless we take full responsibility. So I'm doing a series on this and I have a free master class and I want to talk about it more. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want, I want to create more of the conversation. 
And this is really what I've been doing for the last six years. I just have been finding a way, weaving a story around it myself to help us tell the story, those of us who are waking up. And I can tell you this, I've never been more optimistic about life. I've had some really, this, especially this last round of mentoring I did, I've never been more excited. These creators are coming alive. They're waking up. They're powerful people. And we're in powerful places of influence. And we are waking up. And that means we are taking full responsibility. We're no longer having to make someone a victim or an enemy in order for our story to make sense to us. We are taking full responsibility as the storyteller, as, the, as all roles, as the ultimate trinity. I love flashing the Illuminati sign. That's so triggering to people. But it's interesting because everything, the reason why we have this sign, it's where all things connect. Body, heart, mind. Ourselves, the other, the planet. The father, the son, the spirit, or the mother, the grandmother, the mother, and the, the granddaughter. The matriarch, the patriarch, the story of life, the fullness of what we are. It's coming into play. And I believe archetypally we are starting to embody archetypes we are starting to embody masters and so the story that we're telling about what it's like to be a human on this planet is going to be a little different because what is it like to be a human that's fully liberated what is it like to be a human that's fully restored and more importantly where we're at right now is what does that process look like what does the process of transformation look like you can think of it as one way when a caterpillar is just eating along its leaves. It's kind of like the mind, just surviving, just doing what it's programmed to do. And it naturally will go up and then create a chrysalis. Its story becomes christened and it dissolves within itself. Now when you're in a process of death, which is what we're pretty much doing right now, we're dying to an old matrix. When we're in a process of death, when you're about to die, when people are about to die, what, they're, what they reach for is their heart, not their mind. They reach for the things that give meaning to their heart, all the things that gave their life meaning. And suddenly all the things that didn't, all the contrast they were creating and sifting through in order to be just stronger and to know what they are, all of a sudden that doesn't matter. And the only thing that matters is being restored to the heart. We need our hearts for this part of the journey because without the heart, you can't fully understand the story. The heart is the story. It's deeply relation, relational and deeply personal. And the more you allow your heart to matter, the more we allow our hearts to matter, the more our matrix, our world, our reflection feels like we're at home. The more we feel connected to who we are. It's that coming back alive. But, you know, a lot of people talk about our descent when we, you know, the, the mythological story of us falling from Eden. We all have this sense, and it's through all human cultures, no matter what religion, there's, there's an idea of a paradise lost, of a space where a golden age, or a space where we were, where we were, were whole, and something happened and we fell. And then we've been moving in this fall, this, this fall of consciousness, where we haven't remembered that we are the storyteller. We have created these alternate we've created these characters, these, the villain, the victim, the victim and the savior. We've created different roles, different experiences of these characters in which we're playing out these stories to try to understand what we are. But pretty soon, inevitably, you start realizing you are all roles. You are all roles and you can understand and fully go into every role and you know those roles from the inside out and you can even have compassion on those roles and you see how they function and you see why they function and you see even why they're necessary in the lack matrix. And there, inevitably, you start, we start wondering, okay, well, what's the next level of the game? That's the matrix we're downloading right now. We're downloading the next level of the game. And I know a lot of you, if you're here, you've been, knowing, you've been feeling that, okay, there's another level of the game. Now, I can't pretend to know exactly what that is, but I'm in, based on my intuition and tuning into my own abundance and back into my own heart, listening to my own story, I have been excited because I feel like what, at least in my matrix, what's asking for is more, more playfulness as we do this. Not taking ourselves so seriously, but remembering this is the game of restoration. If we want to have heaven on earth, not only do we need to be embodied and allow our desire to be here, Eden is about desire. It's about having all of your needs met, of not having lack. If we want to embody heaven on earth, our hearts need to matter to us. We can no longer put them on the side, no longer say they, they are only second to our minds. In fact, you guys know who, those of you who follow me know I, I say this all the time and I'm going to continue saying it. Our hearts 
are 5,000 times more magnetically powerful than the brain and 60 times more electrically powerful than the brain. So the brain is incredibly powerful and complex and amazing and it has abilities the heart doesn't have, it doesn't have in terms of creating and understanding the grid. But the brain does not have the capacity to understand what will happen. It can only draw on the past, what has happened. And so when you're creating something new, if you want to ride that edge of creation, again, keep that pulse on what is the collective asking for from you as a creator and what is your heart asking for. If you want to keep your finger on that pulse, you've got to tune in. And if you tune in, you realize the asking is not for more psychic warfare. It's not for more stories about our pain because we're at this point very, very aware of it. What we're interested in is how do we work our way out of it? How do we find our way back to our hearts? What does the restoration look like? And is it possible? What are we capable of? And there's a reason why we are dreamers. There's a reason why we long for things, why we see, we see other worlds and we connect to other worlds and we know that there's more than this. There's a reason. And so I wanna invite you to start tuning into the abundance matrix and to start allowing your heart to matter. And if you really wanna go deeper and learn more about how I, how the story's been coming to me about how to free your inner genie, I would really love you to sign up for my email list so that you can get my free masterclass on how to free your genie, how to free your inner genius, your inner creative self, your inner storyteller. And this is really about learning to get in touch with our true desires and what we really want. And also learning that our lamp, our genie lamp, we can create that to be whatever we need to feel safe while we're going through this transition. Just like a caterpillar creates a chrysalis. You are dying, we are dying. An aspect of us are, is dying because it no, we no longer need it and it's no longer working. And so it's a, in the death process, there is grief and there is a sense of holding on to the old. It's like coming out from un, the underworld. Like in the story of Persephone, I think it's Persephone. When she comes back in, in the springtime to be with her mother um, from the underworld, there's parts of the underworld she misses and she liked because we all learned how to thrive in the underworld. We all learned how to survive and, and I shouldn't say thrive, we all learned how to survive in the underworld and we fell in love with it, so to speak. We fell in love with Hades. We fell in love with the underworld because it's all we knew. But eventually we realize, okay, this will, we're stuck here. We're trapped here. We are enslaved here. We're enslaved to a desire that we can never fill because we believe fundamentally that we're disconnected from it, that we cannot meet our needs, that we are in lack. And as I've been saying, lack is the biggest trauma of the human race. So in order to heal our traumas, we have to retune into our hearts, tune into abundance. And I believe in my reality, this is called shadow work. This is where we confront our subconscious mind and all the shadows that we've created in order to protect us in a world where we believed we were lacking. But the whole time, all of us was alive. We were just disconnected from it. So I would love to have you go along this journey with me. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing it like a game. I'm trying to do it lighthearted, but there's nothing more serious that I've ever talked about in my life. And it's really cool what's happening. I'm telling you, I've never seen more evidence of this happening. I have people every day tell me the most amazing stories who tune into this matrix and who go through the process, go through the death process, letting themselves dissolve fully in their chrysalis, allowing your story to be christened, to give it a name. And when you name something, you immortalize it. You, you give it a story. It matters. The chrysalis is christening the life of the caterpillar. The caterpillar that is still alive in the butterfly and we don't turn around and curse the caterpillar because the butterfly couldn't be the butterfly without the caterpillar. And that is how this approach, when we start coming alive and waking up to our full hearts and our full desires, we don't curse our past selves and we certainly don't pretend our past selves didn't exist. We see it, we love it. This is about loving and integrating our past self. This butterfly keeps flying over my head. It's so cute. Um, sorry. <laughs> distracted easily I'm easily distracted um, it's just magical here right now like the water's so quiet and beautiful I'll I don't know I'll, I'll show you in a second but anyway so sign up for my email list for my free master class if you want to go deeper with this and if you want to kind of play play along with this and I'm also inviting you and you'll hear more about this in the class if you have moments where you're feeling that awakening feeling yourself waking up feeling 
the call for the higher metaphor to come through you, feeling the pulse of you know you're riding the edge of creation and you can feel that something big is about to shift and you're a part of it. In those moments where you're feeling centered, where you are feeling connected to your whole self, if anything happens and you want to snap a photo of the, those moments, if it's something beautiful you're capturing or whatever, anyway, or you want to write about it, capture it in some way. And if you want to somehow put it on social media and hashtag it, Operation 777 is the beginning of a new game. And I'm excited to play with you guys. And before I go, look how beautiful this is. And somebody created a little rock, I don't know if you can see it, a little rock, um, pyramid thing. What are they called? Those Zen things, those Zen towers. It was already created when I got here. It was like the perfect little welcoming. So yes, I love you guys. If you can get out in nature, get out in nature because this is where you're going to connect to that higher metaphor, connect to your whole self because this is who we are right here. Nature. This is the story. All right. Love you guys.